Hello, I'm Jack Pike, and welcome to the WIHS Journal Public Affairs Program. Today, we are talking about the National Federation of the Blind, the state chapter, and an upcoming event. I'm joined on the phone by, or in the studio, excuse me, by Melissa Thompson, who is the Greater Hartford Chapter President in Connecticut. And also with us by phone is Marianne Melly, President of the Connecticut Chapter of the National Federation of the Blind. So welcome, ladies. Thank you. Have, great to have you with us this morning. Thank you for having us. And thank um, for- yeah, thank you. Um, so I want to talk about uh, this nationwide group as well as some of the upcoming local activities, as I said. So I want to start off by having you tell our listeners about this organization and what brought you to be involved. So I'll start, start with you, Melissa. Um, I'm a, I want to first tell you why I became involved with the National Federation of the Blind. Mm-hmm. I was looking for some com- camaraderie and amongst people that I can identify with and that understood me and understood um, the challenges that a person who is visually impaired or blind face in today's world. So I was looking for that and I was also looking for new and innovative innovative ways to um, to do different things. I was looking to learn different skills, uh, cane travel and uh, computer skills and I just knew the National Federation of the Blind was the organization to go to to learn these different things. And Marianne, how about yourself? Well, um, I joined the Federation 20 years ago. Um, I found out about it actually when I went to get my first guide dog because uh, back then um, the services for the blind in Connecticut referred to the National Federation of the Blind as, quote, that radical group in (laughs) East Hartford, end quote. So I was kind of thrown by that. I said, oh, well, you know, I don't want to be with some radical group. But every other group I went to really didn't give me what I needed, which is similar to what Melissa was talking about. I I was looking for um, other people of my age who were going through blindness. I used to be able to see and drive and other things, and now all of a sudden I couldn't. So I was looking for support and, and answers on how to live my life as a blind person so I met a gentleman at Guide Dog School who told me about the National Federation of the Blind, and I went to my first national convention where all, all the people from 50 states are there, and it really opened my eyes to how much the National Federation of the Blind can do for blind individuals. So then I joined a local chapter here in Connecticut. Each state actually has what we're called affiliates in the states, not chapters, and then there are chapters under the affiliates. Nationally, there's I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of different benefits and, and things you can tap into, but for the local area, what are some of the services and benefits for members and the public? So uh, if you join us, we have five scholarships for students that we have uh, money from different very generous people. We offer uh, advice to someone. Uh, a, a woman just called me regarding her 93-year-old sister who's not being taken care of properly at a retirement facility. So I'm going to go talk to them about, you know, how to properly talk with and, and work with a blind individual. We have the courtesy rules of blindness that we like to share with uh, the sighted community because to be honest with you, you know, we are a minority in this world we live in and so many people don't know how to deal with us. So it's our job to educate them and we also offer uh, technology grants. We, we offer it twice a year and then we have a more robust one with more money if you live in certain towns in the New Haven area. Um, One of our grant writers received that grant through her hard work. So we do as as much as we can. If someone comes to us uh, newly blind, we connect them with the services for the blind in the state of Connecticut so they can get 
mo- orientation and mobility with, uh, with the cane, long white cane, to help them get out of their house and start their trip towards being a more free and independent person being blind. That's right. And then um, on the, the national, they have a white cane uh, program where every person who is blind or visually impaired will get a cane and you can get one every six months because they do wear out. <laughs> so there is, is that's not a, a charge. So yeah, yeah, it, that's, it's a good program. And then we have different divisions. So go, guide dog, dog users, um, they have a division and they're also a division of our um, Connecticut Blind Association of um, uh, the students have a division too. Yes. Yes. So it's yeah, for, for young and old alike. Yeah, not not necessarily adults, but also for children. Obviously, it would be yes available. For right. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's better for a person when the the earlier in their in their um journey as becoming blind or being blind is is better to get involved with the federation because even national has a lot of programs and because you are part of the federation you are able to take advantage and and join in and go out to to learn the different skills that is needed to be successful in life one of the programs that i know national have is called the bell academy which is the braille enrichment Mm -hmm. um program and learning how to read braille but learning skills different skills and mary Ann could attest to the other ones the the science the stem programs and STEM programs yeah now, I want to uh, turn a corner real quick, too, just for sake of time, and uh, because you do have a, na- a state convention coming up, and I want to talk about that and, and where it's going to be and, and how people can, uh, can connect in for that. So our 53rd state convention will be held this year from November 1st to the 3rd, and that is the largest uh, group gathering of blind people in the state. So that will be held at the Courtyard by Marriott in um, Shelton, Connecticut. You could tell them a little bit more, Marianne. Oh, sure. Um, so every year we have a state convention. We get speakers to come to our convention, and we we try and get different people so it's interesting. We'll get Carol Jenkins because she is the um, the head of FESB. And um, Matt Giza, he's the Connecticut Library for Accessible Books. Visibility Rights Connecticut will be speaking. So there's a lot of different speakers to give our members new information that may help them with questions that they have that haven't been answered before. Well, yeah. thank you so much. I appreciate uh, this information uh, and appreciate having you both, one in studio and one on the phone here. And uh, we will uh, put together a program and have that out for our our radio listeners in a, in a short while. So thank you so much for your time for this and appreciate it. Thank you. We thank you. Thank you. We thank you. This program has been about the National Federation of the Blind and the upcoming convention. If you would like to have more information about today's program, call WIHS at 860-346-1049. That's 860-346-1049. I'm Jack Pike for the WIHS Journal.